When I was a kid, I launched rockets off of a small launch rod, just like this one. But what do you use for a launch rod when your rockets get just a little bit bigger? Hello and welcome to Rotary Rocketry. So when I started building larger rockets like this, I had the same exact question. What do I need to use for a launch rod to launch something this big? Well, before we get started, I just want to mention we're going to talk about several different products today. Launch rails, rail buttons, mounting brackets. I've got links down in the description to websites that have all those products available. So if you want to learn a little bit more about each one of them, check out the links. So I had a couple of different ideas for launch rod systems. One of them was just to take the idea that we already knew and scale it up into something a bit larger. So we got a quarter inch steel rod, mounted it into a base, and then I made these little custom tubes that glued onto the rocket that allowed it to slide down onto this rod. Now the one we used was actually a lot longer than this. It was about seven or eight feet long. Now this type of launch system works, but it can suffer from a little problem called rod whip. Let me illustrate what that is using the smaller one. So the rocket slides down onto the rod and it's off to one side. Now sometimes when the rocket takes off, it'll slide perfectly up the rail and take off perfectly straight. But sometimes it will exert some side pressure onto the rail, pushing it off to the side like that, and the rocket will shoot off at some random angle. Now if you're launching in an area where there's buildings, forests, lakes, that's not usually very desirable to shoot off at an angle and may result in losing your rocket. If it lands in a lake or up in a tree 70 feet up in the air, you're not going to get that rocket back. And rod whip can happen with these smaller launch rods and it can also happen if you scale it up to a larger rod. So why do they call it rod whip? Well, rod whip. So how do you solve the problem? Well, with this type of launch rod, you don't. You need a different system. And here's the solution. This is a 10-10 rail. Now you can buy this in just about any length you want. This one is eight feet long. It's a square aluminum rod with slots running down the sides. The part number 1010 comes from the size of the product. This one is 1.0 inches by 1.0 inches, and that's why it's called a 1010 rail. Now there's several other sizes of this rail available, some a little bit smaller and some a little bit larger, but I think you'll find that the 1010 rail is the most common in amateur rocketry. It's good for launching rockets this size, but you can also launch rockets much smaller than this and much larger than this off of this size rail. So how do you attach a rocket to this rail? Well, that's where these little things come in right here. These are called rail buttons. You attach two rail buttons to the rocket and that allows you to slide the rocket down into the slots on the rail. You see here the rail button fits into the slot on the rail. Rail buttons typically come in two styles, three piece and one piece. The three piece has a washer, a spacer, and another washer. The one piece is, well, just one piece. These both work well, but I personally prefer the one piece design. A couple of tips about installing the rail buttons onto the rocket. First of all, you don't want to over tighten that screw. If you over tighten it, you run the risk of either cracking the rail button or squishing it and deforming it. If you squish it enough, it won't slide properly onto the rail. Here's how I install them without over tightening. After putting the screw through the rocket body, I put a small dab of caulking on the screw threads and then a dab of caulking on the nut and fill the hole of the nut. Then screw this nice and snug, not tight, not loose, just snug. Once that caulking is dry, it acts like a thread locker and prevents this from loosening. Now this launch rod is not going to stand up on its own. You need to mount it to something or onto some type of a base for good support. So let me show you the system that we use. Here I have a piece of 3 quarter inch fiberboard for a base. This has two shelf brackets fastened to it. I have four thumb screws on the brackets and there's four of these small oval shaped nuts on the other side. We'll talk a little bit more about these nuts in a minute. The rail slides down onto the nuts and then you tighten the screws to secure it in place. Here's a picture of another mounting plate that I found online that I think would also work well for attaching this type of rail to a base plate. You would need to drill two small holes in the side for the bolts. There are some mounting brackets that are specifically made to attach this type of rail to a flat surface, but most of them are really short. And because the rail is long, I prefer to have some type of a mounting system that goes up the rail to offer a little bit of support. 
Here are some of those oval nuts that we saw on the mounting bracket. These come in a package with screws. You may not need the screws, but the nuts are really useful for mounting the rail to something or for mounting things to the rail. Now speaking of mounting things to the rail, let's take a look at two things I have attached to the rail near the bottom. This top one is a bolt and a nut, and on the inside is one of those oval shaped nuts. You tighten the outer nut to lock this in place, and this is a rocket stop. The rocket slides down onto the rail and sits on this bolt when it's ready for launch. And just below that I have a similar thing. This one has a small metal bar attached. This is where I place the blast shield. The blast shield deflects exhaust gases and debris away from the bottom of the rail, and in this design it also protects the base plate. The rod will get some residue or soot on it from motor exhaust gases, so you need to clean it every so often. If you're using sugar fuels like we do, then just a wet rag and some water will remove all that residue. And don't forget to clean inside the slot. If you're using some other types of fuels, you may need to use some cleaner to remove the residue if it doesn't come off with just water. If you're not subscribed to the channel, now would be a great time to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that like button, we really appreciate it. And that's the basics of the 1010 launch rail system. I hope I've helped some of you understand a little bit more about this system and the advantages of it. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.